Okay, so we are back live here, and uh, again we have a, a top player in our commentary booth, uh, which is uh, very good. Uh, and uh, let me introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, Christina Tkach is uh, one of the leading uh, European female players. Hello, Christina. Hello, everybody. So it's like uh, Ruslan Chinakov versus David Elkade. Uh, could you please uh, tell us a little bit about your own performance uh, here in the single eliminations against Denis Grabe? Well, uh, because so far you were like beating everyone like eight to one, eight to two scoreline. It was pretty easy, like seemingly pretty easy bracket uh, for you. But uh, now, like Denis uh, seemed to prevail. Yeah, um, I think uh, I had. Um, I had enough chances, I think, but uh, I didn't use them and uh, I didn't have a break. That's, I think, the main reason I lost, because if you don't have a break, it's just impossible to win against such a player as uh, him. So if you don't run out, then he will run out your break and uh, his own break, so there is no chances without break. Oh, by the way, I think uh, your fans uh, could have uh, spotted uh, on your uh, Facebook that uh, you've got a uh, new sponsorship. Yeah, from uh, Predator. Um, so which uh, kind of uh, break you uh, you use now? Uh, Becca 3. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, it's is amazing. It, is it brand new? I mean, uh, because uh, I think uh, I've uh, known from your father that uh, y you have been using... Uh, uh, playing Predator Shaft actually uh, as a break-in. Uh, yeah, because my was broken. <laughs> That's why I used the um, player shaft with a tip from uh, breaking cube. Yeah. And now um, after I tried uh, Becca 3, I think it's amazing uh, cue really. And not because it's my uh, sponsor and I have to say it, but I really think like well, We've got pretty, pretty lot of players uh, swearing by BK3. But uh, still, uh, I think uh, there are many of them who don't like it as uh, compared to BK2, the previous model. No, I, I think uh, the third is better than the second. Uh, you, you feel it, it seems heavier, I think, a little bit heavier, and that's why break uh, becomes more pow powerful. So, Christina, could you please uh, rise a little bit? Ah, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> because we couldn't see you behind the monitor. <laughs> I'm too little. <laughs> you see, she's a very young, young girl, girl so far and uh, has to get some length. P pillow so under my ass. <laughs> no, no, no. Just uh, you've got to grow a little bit. <laughs> which I think is only a matter of time. <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope. <laughs> so, okay, uh, here we are here uh, into the first track of this game. Uh, Ruslan made a good save, I think. Let me just check uh, the tournament bracket to once again to keep you updated uh, with the scores. Let's get back to it uh, in between the frames. It's a race to eight and uh, alternate break. If you haven't been keeping with us recently uh, during previous two days, and uh, this looks like a mistake from David. Uh, he caught the one ball uh, too thin, I think. Yeah, and now uh, Ruslan has a position. Who is your favorite here? Oh, for sure, Ruslan, as he is my. He's like uh, uh, elder brother for me, and uh, he helps me a lot with the pool and some um, advices. And uh, of course, I support uh, Ruslan. And I think is it the only reason? No, like and I think of course he can beat Al, Al Qaeda as he did many times before. Well, oh, because recently I think uh, David is in his top form now. Uh, he um, has um, just um, finished fifth uh, at the US Open, yeah. uh, which is pretty solid. But still, Ruslan also can show a very good game, and uh, I think he's also on the in the good shape now. Well, I don't think that uh, Ruslan looks uh, weaker than Al Qaeda.
So we're going to one rail here. I think two rails. Yeah. Yes, you are correct. Uh, this is why it's very good to have a top player. <laughs> yeah, because um, from the one rail um, um, a zone becomes a little less. Uh, yes, than uh, uh, it's easier. Uh, the it's, position control, it's yeah. wider. Yeah, it's wider. The, the hit uh, is easier. That's correct. Uh, by the way, we have been uh, talking about uh, you as well recently uh, in terms of uh, you practicing uh, as hard as uh, you can. Uh, how many hours uh, daily day? Yes, you, you, you practice right now? Well, um, Maybe especially prior to this big event? Well, it's always about, uh, it doesn't matter before which tournament I practice. Because I think uh, you have to start preparing not before the tournaments. You have always, uh, always practicing to keep a good shape, and um, I practice about five, six hours every day. Depends. Oh, uh, that's a lot. Uh, it depends um, if I have something also to do uh, after practicing. If I am totally free, then I can practice another seven hours. <laughs> Well, I I don't have problems with the uh, practicing. I, I really like it. Are there any uh, special parts of the game uh, you trying to uh, pay attention to right mm, now? Yeah, I uh, I work a lot under um, 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 under cubal control. Uh, there is many exercises I do for um, make higher. Uh, control under the cue ball because I think uh, a lot of players has uh, have problems with this part of the game and it's really important to make uh, right angles because if you make uh, right angles then the game looks really easy and of course uh, saves and the jump shots uh yeah, and probably your recent match uh, is going to force you to work on your break as well yeah sure and break it's uh, I think break it's a it's a yes it's it's, it's very it has become a very big part of the game actually yeah. recently of course if you don't have a break then it doesn't matter what you do because everything lose sense if uh, your opponent has a good break then there is no chances So here David Alcada managed to uh, escape a foul, but uh, he is not the one uh, who is in command in this wreck right now because uh, Ruslan is... Uh, he continues torturing his opponent with yeah. safeties. But I think Alcada can see a ball and... Uh, oh no. So one rail hit is there. No. Managed to avoid avoid the scratch. And the five ball doesn't drop. Yeah, that's lucky for Ruslan. Otherwise he would. By the way, uh, have you have you played uh, on diamond tables before? No, never. I had never played before on the diamonds, and um, I think I prefer more to play on diamonds than on dynamics. I really like it more. It's a really straight and correct table with, uh, I mean, about the diamond system. You always know where a cue ball will go after your shot. What about the balls staying in the jaws? Yeah, that's, that's, I think, um, that's the only not good thing about this table, because sometimes you... Well, probably it's not, uh, it's not the table, but the player. N yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, if you always uh, make a ball in the middle of the pocket, you don't have a problems, but... Yeah, exactly. 
sometimes it's like it's going in the pocket and hit a little bit of the rail. Well, it's, uh, I think it's pretty natural uh, for the player with a vast experience of uh, playing uh, on uh, uh, tables of other brands uh, to kind of expect the ball uh, dropping in, but yeah. all of a sudden it doesn't. Yeah, because I practice on the dynamics and for me it was like why well, it stayed in the pocket and a uh, couple of the couple of the shots I had to use to it. So we have a uh, Ruslan Chenkov on the scoreboard here. First blood. Well, it's it's always good to um, open score let's say like this. It's always good leading and not be behind. Uh, do you personally like uh, coming from behind? <laughs> like well, um, I, on some events, w it was uh, many times like I, I behind two or three racks and win, and like five and or f four matches in the row like this, and it seems like for me it's better be behind. But I think nobody likes to be behind, and it's always better have a um, couple of, r of racks in front of. Because if you, I don't know, maybe less nervous. A golden break from oh. Well, that's a pretty solid break. Yeah, but from Al Qaeda. Not lucky with the football. Or I think, no. Yes, it doesn't pass anywhere, and uh, even the bank shot is uh, not on here. Yeah, I think if there wouldn't be ten ball, he would uh, try to. Oh no? No. Oh, probably he's, he's still considering uh, the break here. Trying to break up this cluster. Yeah, but it's hard because of the turn ball. Because it uh, it's on the way to speed. Yeah, so it blocks it blocks the natural yeah. path. So we here we see uh, Ian Anderson, uh, the WPA president, once again. Uh, this time without Jochen Rausing nearby. Totally on his own. It was the story during the previous match, when Jochen was like uh, maybe showing some insights. Well, he could have m maybe probably tried uh, to break the balls uh, using the one ball here, going at, at more steep angle. Well, I think he he will play safe after this. After oh. this, he after will have to. Yeah. I think he doesn't uh, even thinking about uh, split. We can uh, just uh, take a look at the rail first option here. Yeah, but it's very dangerous. Trying to duck behind yeah, the yeah, behind the eight. Yeah, but it's it's very dangerous and uh, it has to be a brilliant shot. Otherwise, uh, football will stay around the corner pocket. Yeah, so he favors the thin cut here. I think it's behind the seven. Exactly. Uh, it's perfect. It's a very nice safety, very yeah. nice touch. But anyway, even if you wouldn't put it behind the seven ball, it still would be acceptable uh, safe shot because uh, Ruslan couldn't make a ball Ruslan makes a call that I think it's uh, 8 ball in the side Co in the side yeah, he's hoping to cut it in uh, using yeah. the 4 ball He's so good at uh, kicking, yeah, actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's a oh scratch oh on, and the, the scratch is uh, what happens here. Not lucky. Five, ta five balls on the table, and the possibility to uh, run out the rest of the rack for David Okay, The, the scoreline is behind again. Sorry about that, guys.
Oh, he still has uh, some work to do uh, with uh, going from 7 to the 8. Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal for David. Because uh, 8 ball standing almost in the uh, in the pocket. And it's a very big area just to cross the middle line of the table. But it he seems that Oh, I don't I don't think he managed to roll the cue ball far enough. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Yes, the the, the shot is acceptable, but uh, not it to hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. Almost stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> but Well, David Gaeta gets one rack back here. We're even again, and uh, we're only in the very beginning of the match. More fascinating racks to come here. That's a very powerful break from uh, Ruslan yeah. Chinakov. He has a good break, but unfortunately not always he can um, oh, first control a cue ball. First of all, he's got a uh, pretty massive weight in his body, uh, which yeah. he puts uh, into the cue ball, yeah. like throws it in. Well, will he attack it? Well, well the, bank, the bank is on, uh, actually. Or he's playing safe. Yeah, because I didn't see he called the ball. It's a good save. But um, it's easy jump shot. Yes, and uh, this is uh, that very part of equipment uh, David Alcade is going to get right now. So is your current uh, jump uh, Q in Predator Air? Yeah. <laughs> I also how, do, how do you like it? <laughs> oh, I really love it because um, as I'm not really tall, it's sometimes really hard for me to make a, a jump shot because I have to go on my... To like... To toes uh, to and... Uh, um, it helps me because it jump even if I don't uh, put a lot of energy and don't uh, stand very high. So uh, I think it's very good for me. That's a nice thing to have, and I think uh, David is uh, using just the same. Yeah. Oh no, it's an uh, old previous model, it's not an air. I think so. Mm. But he got lucky. Didn't leave a ball for Ruslan. Mm. And it's not really that easy safe. So we have some bass here in the background. Do you know uh, Evgeny Stalev uh, decided yeah. to quit uh, his as game? A, as a last year. Yeah, um, exactly. As last year, um, he played with the Thurston Homan, I think, 
and uh, oh, back then he quit at six a piece, I think. Yeah. Now he was trailing one to two. Unfortunately, because uh, everyone was uh, so excited uh, by watching this match, uh, Stalif uh, Homan, I mean, because it was six seven, and uh, Stalif was on the table, I think. Well, actually, it wasn't said uh, about like Homan versus Stalif because uh, I believe still that Daria Sirotina uh, is uh, very well capable of uh, beating uh, the player of Yevgeny Skalab. Yeah, why not? But not, uh, not every player can handle with uh, such a uh, loud noise. So we should inject up a little bit here. It's not uh, very comfortable. But he got not lucky kick. I mean, if he would, wouldn't touch this ball, he would have a position. Well, uh, good thing uh, about uh, this background sound is uh, the foreigners are going to learn some Russian music here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding, of course. It's still pretty nine. And this is basically the reason uh, we uh, um, switched from uh, our schedule to just uh, rolling on and on without any interruptions uh, in order to hope to make it with the semi-finals before the like show starts. Be <laughs> before the apocalypse actually uh, I was going to say. <laughs> So uh, Paul Smith is uh, back with us here um, and actually I was looking uh, for you in between the matches uh, because uh, when I was here uh, with Thorsten Homan uh, I kind of missed uh, whether you managed to uh, check the wreck. <laughs> Brain damage. Ah, oh, that's all right. I, uh, I can I confess I didn't pay attention uh, to the way the referee wrecks uh, uh, in this particular match. Just barely managed to avoid the scratch. Yeah. Mm, but not enough speed. Well, with the Ruslan's technique, uh, he is even uh, able to make a draw of this three and uh, never touch anything. Mm, he's very he's, he's very skilled in like in well various really com combinations of extreme English. You see. That was a great shot. shot. And actually he could uh, have also hit it at uh, rocket speed and uh, still uh, make the shot. He is that good. A good angle for 7 ball. I think uh, Ruslan also in a good shape and... He can even manage to win. Many viewers, especially the Americans, uh, they mentioned uh, Ruslan has got a such a beautiful stroke in motion. I think he got it from the Russian pyramid as he played it before the pool. And um, it's very exciting to watch him because I think he plays very... But at the same time, I think it was uh, Jochen Rausing uh, telling me that... Uh, 
uh, it is uh, even harder to control uh, this uh, kind of uh, long backstroke Ruslan has got because uh, it is uh, not uh, especially necessary in pool but since he developed uh, such kind of stroke it's okay with uh, for him he makes it work I watched him play straight pool at the Derby City Classic, and his fundamentals are really, really sound. I even uh, read uh, at AZ Beards that uh, one of the fans, he came there to uh, Derby City Classic straight pool challenge only to watch Ruslan, and uh, this fan uh, even uh, dared to keep the score just to be there. Good break, well, but was a little tough getting from the two to the yeah. three. Depends on his angle here. I think he has enough angle that he can go to the end rail and roll it back up to the center of the table. Perfect. Yeah, nice call, Paul. Here we have Fedor Gorst walking in the background right now. His opponent is Alex Kazakis and uh, Fedor was trading. It was 1 to 2, probably even more now. Ah, there are two apiece. So maybe it's uh, the Greek uh, who took the timeout actually. Okay, our Danish DJ and uh, pool player, Daniel Candy, uh, who was uh, here with us yesterday, he managed to beat Evgeny Buslaev and uh, he's through to the next round, which means uh, we're not going to hear him uh, for a while again. <laughs> well, his opponent is Daria Sirotina, and uh, well, pretty interesting uh, how she manages to cope with this one. Ralph Suke is through over Eklant Kachi. And David Alcade here playing with a very nice tempo. Oh, when he's playing well, he makes the game look very easy. It's always the same with, with the top players, and actually one of the problems uh, for viewers who tend to think that uh, pool is an easy game. That's actually how I got started playing pool. I was watching somebody play straight pool that I'd never seen anybody who could make two or three balls in a row, and he was running three and four racks, and he made it look so easy, I said, I'm going to learn how to do that. And then within a few months, I found out that wasn't easy, and then I had to become a serious student of the game to learn how to play, and it took me several years to get to where he was at. Uh, by the way, uh, um, I know you have some straight pool background. Uh, what is your high run? Only 80. I'm not such a good player. Only 80. Could you guess uh, what's uh, her high run? 
Probably 150. Wow, you are close. Hmm. Christina? 123. Very good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad you warned me so I don't play her. <laughs> Not too shabby, eh? No. Nope. I've been practicing um, a straight pull because it was my uh, goal to make uh, over 100. I practice like half an hour every day, six hours straight pull. And sometimes when I was coming to practicing, I really uh, felt so sick <laughs> from straightful but I somehow managed to make it well, <coughs> when I started playing pool I only played two games I played straight pool and I played three cushion billiards and straight pool is a good game as a foundation to every game there is in pool so I think it's the perfect game to practice and it'll make you good at everything yeah people say if you can play in straight pool you have no problems playing in other disciplines the only thing that's missing from straight pull really is learning the nuances of the break and nine ball and ten ball. Yeah. And that's a whole separate kind of practice. But as far as the rest of it, it's a great foundation. Yeah, again, because you can learn how to control a cue ball very, very good. It's a good game for practicing cue ball control. Yes, it's a very pre very precise game. Yeah. Safety play, breaking clusters up and getting position off the clusters. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that straight pull teaches you. So the little guy is here with the shot and um, I don't think he made the call. I think because he will try to cut it to uh, left pocket. Now he is aiming uh, just to, to nudge the one uh, on the left side and uh, bring the cue ball somewhere. Yeah, he's playing safe, that's why he was looking at the end of the table with his cue stick. He's trying to determine where he wanted to put the cue ball, where he's going to have the best chance of getting a good safety. Very well executed. When he decided to go off the right side of the one ball, he walked around the table and looked at the three to make sure of the path of the cue ball so it didn't run into the three so he would get the safety. He's a very smart player, David. So is Ruslan. Oh, yes. <laughs> no question. Meaning we have a very nice clash here. Oh, mm -hmm. unlucky. That's always a risk when you use a jump shot, though, because you have to hit it that hard to get over the first ball, and it starts bouncing, so it can always go off the table. Now that's an open rack for David. I hit that a little weak. But it's pretty easy to recover from here. Oh, talking about straight pole, David uh, is a European straight pole champion, 2010. So he knows how to play position, <laughs> even in tiny spaces.
So, Christina, will you go uh, three rails around here? Of course. To... Yeah. He's aiming low on the cue ball, yeah. I think. Wow, he came pretty close to that 10 ball. It was close to touch a 10 ball, yeah. But he recovered well. Yeah, nicely played in an open position. Uh, it uh, didn't. Uh, it wasn't expected to have any problems, but you never know. Well, he made it an <laughs> adventure because he he came short on his position on the four ball, and then after that, the problem sort of magnified. And then he recovered on the next to last shot, and he had an easy shot on the 10 ball. That's a mark of a great player, though. The guys that get out of position, and then they can recover the position in a few shots. Well, we have a semifinals introduced, uh, semifinals of the Russian uh, Pyramid event here. He's going to run just uh, nearby. In the background. Looks like the rack is still in the same place. We we're noticing the last match that the, the rack is forward maybe this far. Really? If you, yeah, you'll be able to see it from, a th uh, from the top camera. Uh, it's pretty visible. Yeah, th this is the wrong angle to see it. No ball on the break. And, uh, yeah, it seems she put it a little bit lower. Higher. Or it higher. It it hmm? That's what we were wondering. We were going to go check. I was going to go check the mark on the table, and I forgot after the last match. That's okay. It's still uh, on your schedule. So what about the four ball? It goes to the corner pocket? Yes. He just has to get the right angle on the three ball so he can just roll down for the four yeah. in the same pocket he's shooting the two on. Uh. Mm, I don't know what he did with his cue ball here. I think he overall it. And even if he got on the other side of it, he moved the nine out of the way, so he made a pocket for it too. Not that the nine didn't have a pocket, but that's a, that's a very good shot. He exactly knew what he was going to do, so he used uh, all his uh, stroking power to move the cubal around for a nice position uh, on the four ball. Well, as you say, Ruslan is also a very smart player. And recently he is also one of the, those players uh, who tend to play in a glove all the way. Christina, what is your attention uh, about playing uh, in a glove? Do you like it or not? Mm, personally, I don't really like it. I don't feel... I like to feel uh, the way cue ball going on, on my hand. I uh, like this feeling and... Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't when when I play in glove, I don't feel full of game, and that's what I don't like. 
Uh, what about playing in uh, China or Taiwan, by the way? You've been there uh, numerous times already. What about the humidity there? Does it influence uh, the movement of your queue? Um, I think um, it's a little bit wet there. Yeah. And um, but I, I use a um, baby powder. Baby powder. Ah, yeah. Here you have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, because because there are only two ways of uh, dealing with this. It is either a glove or a baby powder. Yeah, I like it more than glove. Well, a lot of players agree with you. And uh, plus, um, every glove I uh, try, it's too big for my hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's really hard to <laughs> to find the right size well, for my they hand. They they <laughs> they also come they also come in L size, <laughs> or S S size. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have small hands also. And Paul was saying he he's got small hands. Oh, you see. Yeah. So, but every player has own uh, opinion. Well, yes, everyone uh, just uh, prefers to stick with uh, what works good for them. Yeah. If you ever see a Molinari glove, they make one that fits me very well. And I have a small hand. You should try it. You might like it. Well, actually, uh, one uh, thing uh, some players, uh, even uh, like recreational or amateur ones, the do not uh, it like about Molinari glove, and I think it's the only one is uh, they come uh, in only one size. And uh, looking at your palm, actually, it's uh, like pretty strong. And uh, have you ever tried Molinari glove? I because got one. Because how come? Uh, I think uh, you are going to rip it uh, right away as, oh. as, as, as soon as you try to put it on. It fits like a glove. <laughs> 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 because uh, re recently I bought a Molinari for myself also because uh, it is very good actually. And uh, it uh, is even a little bit tight for me. And you see like uh, my palm is uh, thinner than yours. Mm. Oh, uh, by the way, we, uh, <laughs> we have a timeout here. What about the rack ball? Oh, it's again, uh, once again, it's a little bit high. Yep. Just uh, maybe half a ball. Well, at least a third of a ball. Uh, yesterday I used some straight line.
Okay, the players are back. And they are going to be back in a while. It's three apiece. Race to eight, alternate break. We have some uh, Spanish viewers here, or at least Spanish speaking. They post comments like Vamos David there. So go, go David. Nice touch. Well, this rack, Ruslan made a terrific break. He made two balls in a break. And he got a fairly nice shot on the one to start. It didn't take him long to run this. No, he's a very dangerous player when he's breaking well. Yes, he is. And uh, actually, last year uh, when we arranged uh, a challenge match uh, of uh, him versus Shane Boning, mm -hmm. it was uh, Ruslan's break which uh, decided uh, the outcome, actually, which is pretty uh, unnatural or unexpected, I would say, uh, if you um, are uh, against a player um, of Shane's caliber. Well, he's acknowledged to have the best 10 ball break. So now the scoring system is a little bit behind again and we cannot uh, keep you updated on uh, the scores in uh, real time. But at least we know uh, it's 4-3 uh, here. Time for a selfie, Christina. <laughs> Not yet. Now it is like to, to post uh, on your <laughs> on <Thank> your feed <laughs> some uh, some nice uh, pic of you with a headphone on. I'm not that. Um, um, I don't know how to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You are not that. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm not that big lover to post everything what's going on with me in my life. Well, but uh, that's a pretty nice experience. I believe uh, this might be the very first time you are doing the commentary. Yeah, it's my first time. Hmm? So that's the reason for yourself. Eh? <laughs> Not very nice leave here because yes, he uh, he's over the nine ball. obstructed by the nine ball here, <laughs> and he's real straight on that ball. So you really can't do a lot with the cue ball here. He's got to be uh, as tall as the Ruslan is, and uh, <laughs> he is well over, uh, I think, uh, six feet, maybe seven. Yeah, the opposite of me. Just short of <laughs> being seven, yeah. Well, in the United States, they call me VIP. It's that's not for very important person. That's a vertically impaired person. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, he was trying to move the cue ball and he missed the three. Well, I think you know Jay Hufford very well. I think uh, he's uh, of your size. No, he's taller than me by about two or three inches. <laughs> well, probably with his toupee on. No, we don't. We don't call him Toupee Jay anymore because he doesn't wear one. Exactly, <laughs> and he's retired from tournament directing. He said he's all finished with that now. Which But makes uh, me sad. He's a very good tournament director. I think uh, he might be still there helping with uh, some he on, the, on the American soil, no? He said no. He's mm. done. He's finished. I see. He announced it on Easy Billiards about three or four months ago. Oh, he likes to play poker. Ruslan, unfortunately, for uh, Russian uh, viewers, uh, lost control uh, in the he's in this wreck. Yeah, would be yeah, would be would be nice to extend his lead here. That's where straight pull comes in handy, because what you learn in straight pull is the table looks like it's laying easy. But if the cue ball rolls an inch too far in one direction or the other, you have an awkward shot. And he had position on the three ball, but it was awkward because he was right up next to the nine ball. Maybe there's some truth to what you said earlier, that maybe this table plays a little faster than the other ones do. Because it takes the players a while to adjust to that, you're right? Absolutely. I'd have to ask them about that. I can't tell from watching the table that it's playing faster. I'd have to ask a few of the players to see what they think. Because well, there's, no, uh, there's no reason for it to. It should be played the same. Unless the environment is different over here. If it's like dry here and more humid over there, then it, it would play a little different. It'd play slower. If it's drier, the bat will play faster. So you mean uh, more playing hours, uh, are uh, not expected to uh, make any influence on table speed? Table humidity will, but I wouldn't expect the humidity to be different here than the other side of the room. So maybe this is just in the player's head that uh, like the TV table is expected uh, to well, play no, there's quicker. There's lights, and the lights dry the cloth out. Uh. But here, that's not the case. The lights yeah. are so up so high. They have no influence on the how dry the cloth is. Another strong, powerful break from uh, Ruslan Chinakov uh, lost control uh, over the cue ball, almost scratch scratched uh, in the corner, but managed to avoid this. Fortunately. Yeah, that's uh, there's also always a. Uh, some kind of fortune involved, probably in any game. So here you could uh, see one of the examples of Ruslan's uh, pretty solid game with a side spin. He's able to make some shots uh, where you just uh, expect, uh, kind of expect the cue ball to drift uh, to the side, uh, to hit the side rail, but now he just manages to work some little magic. Because he has a really long and soft shot. 
That was a very good shot there. It was important that he didn't touch the eight ball, but he had to come closer to give him the right angle for you know, getting back to the middle of the table for the nine. So you see he's not too shy again, uh, using uh, plenty of English to get across the table, Actually not just to roll the ball. I think it's hurting him a little bit though, because th that's part of the reason why he's rolling the ball a little too far. When you're using running English on the side rails, that speeds the ball up a little bit. And he's been getting slightly out of line where the ball's rolled a little bit further than he was expecting it to, and that's the sidesman, I think, that's speeding it up a little. So, my children, when they want to learn how to play pool, and they watch me spin the ball, and that's what they want to do. And I try to tell them, no, that's the path of the dark side. I said, you do, you do not want to learn how to spin the ball. You want to learn how to hit the center of the ball. And actually, it's much harder to hit the center of the ball than it is to do anything else. Well, this part can be very frustrating for uh, the beginner. <laughs> Yes. Just you don't let him uh, do what he wants to. Well, they see the the ball spinning around. That looks like fun. And children want to have fun when they start. Because if it's not fun, they won't continue playing the game. Okay, yeah, and Anderson in the company of uh, Johan Hausink uh, once again. Oh, finally, David managed to have a ball on, on his break. But, but he doesn't have a shot on the one mm. ball. So he's going to have to push. Uh, Christina, I would like to ask you, how often uh, do you choose to push uh, into a jump shot? Me. Yes. Are you Christina? No, that's <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I would rather play... Uh, like push out because um, I'm not really good in jump shots as we discussed it already because I am not really tall for this but uh, sometimes when you make a push out then uh, it's really easy for your opponent to make a good snooker a good um, safe shot and uh, I have to play a jump sh jump shot because anyway it's higher person that you afterwards will have a position than just to give your opponent make you a snooker. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, are on the situation. there are some players uh, you don't uh, want to leave any part of the ball yeah. visible, actually. I don't know uh, how many of uh, those are on the uh, female circuit, maybe not very much, maybe like yeah, uh, 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 Lion King, maybe uh, Yas uh, Yasmin. No, I think all Chinese and uh, Asian players, they are really good in making snookers. That's why if you if you let them just to make a safe shot to be sure you will have a snooker that's why it's quite hard sometimes to make a decision bef in between uh, making snooker and making a safe shot or jump shot I was watching the finals of the women's US Open 9 ball this has been probably maybe f 5 or 6 years ago and it was Karen Kaur against Guy Young Kim. And it was a hill hill match. And Guy Young Kim had she had the break, she broke, made a ball, and didn't have a shot on the one ball. And she pushed to a jump shot. And Karen stepped up to the table, looked at it, got her jump cue, and then she passed it back to Guy Young Kim. And she leaped to the table with her jump cue, popped that in and ran the rack and won the US <laughs> Open eyeball. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And Korea is very supportive of their players because uh, when she won the U.S. Open, the Korean government decided to give her a $250 a month stipend for the rest of her life for being a U.S. Open nine-ball champion. I thought that was really great. Yeah, we could only uh, wish for kind of uh, same, thing similar th same thing here. Yeah. Same thing in the U.S. We, we don't do anything like that for players in the U.S. I think that's great. But they, they love pool and snooker and billiards in, in Korea. Yeah, and and plus uh, she's 
especially especially in Asia, they uh, tend to love uh, women playing yeah. pool very much. Well, it, when it when it's on television in Korea, it's the number one watch show that's on at the moment if it's on television. So it's it's very popular. They have Seoul, Korea. I think they said they had like uh, some ridiculous number, like eighty thousand pool rooms. Now they only have maybe two or four tables. But it's it's extremely popular sport. They have a a university where you can take college courses in billiards, which is very unusual. Yeah, in Taiwan, I know that there is a really school lesson with a billiard. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a physical education, for example, we have it in school, and it's normal for us. It's the same normal for them to have a pool lesson. It's not surpri surprisingly that they're so good in it. If I had pool in school, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have studied any other <laughs> subjects, you know. <laughs> well, when I was a student in college, we had a pool room that had Brunswick anniversary pool tables. They were a beautiful pool room. And once I discovered that, that was pretty much the end of my academic career. That's it. I just played pool. Well, I actually, when I was a scholar... Uh, we didn't have a pool uh, developed in Russia yet, so we had uh, table tennis instead. We did and too. And uh, it was uh, so popular that uh, the uh, school uh, principals, they had to, uh, uh, to, to ban it in the end. Well, at that time, when I was in school, that was my best sport, was table tennis. I was much better at that than I was at pool. I think it was important, Rack, because uh, it's uh, coming closer to the end of the match and uh, it's good to have a uh, leading. I agree, but it didn't work out that way last time. <laughs> it was 7-5. to five Yeah, in favor of Sarastan. Yeah. Right, and then... He made two mis very small mistakes, but it cost him the match. And he broke incredibly well. And actually, I approached uh, to him, and uh, this is the part, of course, he remembers better than me. He was actually eliminated by, by uh, no no that other than Torsten Homer last, last, year, last year. yeah. Hill Hill. Uh, the same fashion, yeah. Yep. Almost. So that made it hurt worse. So the, this year, he made it a little bit closer with the most solid performance, but still the outcome is the same, and uh, this is the thing uh, he is uh, frustrated about. So I told him to, to come to the Derby City Classic and exact his revenge on Thorsten Holman. I said, don't get mad, get even. Because you can't do anything about what just happened. All you can control is what you're going to do next. All right, we have uh, only five wrecks uh, played uh, by Fyodor Gorst and uh, Alex Kazakis, the Greek leading three to two. And uh, four wrecks in uh, some other matches. Uh, Torsten Homan uh, like steps up another gear and uh, he's on the hill against Sanchez Ruiz, seven to two. That's a very solid performance. And the result is not confirmed yet by the bracket, uh, but it shows that uh, Maxim Dudonets uh, must have uh, probably won his uh, match over Mika Imanen with a scoreline of 8 to 6. That's a very good result for Max. I think Mika Imanen wasn't in a good shape this tournament. Well, okay, they cannot see any part of the one ball here. Gonna kick it. Mm, the idea was uh, very nice. Well, he got the cue ball in a nice place. Yeah, even though uh, Ruslan can see one ball, it's still hard. Oh. Oh, still yeah. uh, has some work to be done uh, with the three ball, actually. 
He masseed it. Mm. Just a slight masse. Does he play with a long cue stick? Yes. Because he's so tall. Yes, yes. It's uh, custom, uh, well, made, custom made, I think. 1.8 meters, maybe? It's Jacobi, yeah. And, uh, um, you mean uh, Ruslan's height? No, no. His his cube. I, I think his cube is like six feet long. Mm, no, no, no. Not, 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 not uh, as long as, uh, probably a little bit shorter. Okay. But uh, well, I know uh, he has an oversized shaft and uh, an oversized butt also. He has very large hands. Yeah, it, uh, actually, the length of the Q stick uh, depends uh, on uh, your uh, hand span. Or is it arm span? <laughs> it has arm span. Yeah, arm span, yeah. But uh, typically, your arm span is your height. So if he's six foot seven, he has a six foot seven arm span. Mm. That would be if he's normally proportioned. And he looks to be. So I'd say his arm span is quite long. And Russell actually is uh, one of those players who prefer to um, have a better grip on uh, the butt end of the cue. So you see he is using a rubber band, like rubber wrap there. Well, I've, I've always played with a uh, just bare wood. David Alcade is the same. He uses a repless one. But when it's wet, I have surgical tubing that I can put over the butt end of the cue stick to make it like Ruslan's. So sometimes I, I use that, but most of the time just bare wood. But with surgical tape, you just uh, bend it around, right? Don't, I don't have to. It's rubber. It's a rubber tubing. It's just I can just roll it onto my oh, the butt of my cue stick and then roll it off. Okay, the way he played it, I guess he couldn't make the three, but <laughs> he made it so he can make it now. That was a very nice shot. And it was intent intentional. I don't uh, uh, absolutely uh, yeah, don't expect it was like uh, exactly the way he wanted this to be. But well, of course he was playing to break it out because it was playing laying where it couldn't be made. And actually, let me update the score again. At least I try. Because it's six to four. And looks like uh, the Russian is going to get on the hill. a little bit of a mistake, but he's all right. Is he going to try to reposition the 10 now? Maybe bump uh, the cue ball into it uh, slightly? Well, that's pretty risky. I, I mean, see. I would try to pull it up above the 10, but that's also risky to scratch inside. Well, once again, he's able to only soft draw it, oh, like that, uh, that's exactly that's in the fashion he did it, just because he's so smooth with his uh, stroke in motion. Okay, he's on the hill, and he's playing great. So one of my uh, calls uh, to win the whole event uh, in the face of David Al-Qaeda is now in danger. I also have uh, Alex Kazakis and Torsten Homan. Well, you have a pretty good I team. I, I, di I didn't bet anything, but just, just, uh, it just uh, was my call. I think uh, Al Qaeda impressed me so much with his uh, fifth place finish uh, during the U.S. Open. So, well, this year the U.S. Open had one of the best fields that I've ever seen. So it was a, from start to finish, all the matches were great because there were hardly any weak players in the tournament at all. But the only top player that was missing was Wu, and if you go by the Fargo ratings, the top probably top 25 or 30 players in the world were there, with the exception of one player. Yeah, that's very good. was a very good break there. He got two balls down. 
and the shot on the one and the cluster six and eight. That we was a, that was the Shane Van Bonington ball break. His almost always threatens the scratch in the side, and he's so accurate it, it hesitates and it hits just above the side pocket and bounces out. Well, actually, I wouldn't uh, agree with you here about uh, tending to scratch in the side because uh, usually he manages to hit uh, the one ball full in the face and uh, just the key ball pops and then drops back right in the middle of the table. And strong forward motion uh, helps keeping the key ball there. Mm -hmm. Do you think he tried to break the balls apart here? I'm not sure. He, he should have been thinking about it, though. I'm not sure there's a pocket for the six ball. I guess you could make it in the side, maybe. He's looking at it now. Well, four ball is not in a... A good Not spot in the to break him yeah, good, good, good spot. Uh, like uh, to work as a safety valve here. A gain of piece, uh, a piece of a uh, straight pull approach. Once you are going to um, perform a secondary break, you need a safety ball, or oh, so-called insurance ball, actually. Yes. Well. If he can make the six in the side, he's got an angle on the the ball on the side now that he can get on it. I'm just but not sure. If, I'm not well sure if he can if he can make it in the side. His position play is going to be a uh, surgeon like. He broke it up. Oh, that's what he was trying was to break it up. I don't think he could have got any closer to the ball without hitting it. That was a bad time for that to happen when the other guy's on the hill. Oh. Thanks for watching South Carolina. <laughs> There's John Burroughs watching. Not for the first time, I think. Well, well Alcade's got to come up with some kind of a safety here to stay in the match. He's calling the bank shot. So he's called a cross corner. And nearly made it. But he got a safety. And that was the important part of the shot. Because he's fighting for his tournament life now. Ruslan only needs one more game. That's why it was risky to break those two balls up with no insurance ball, as you said earlier. But he played such a good safety, he, he may survive this, game, this rack. Just take a look. Ruslan is going to try to make a two-rail kick here, trying to pocket the six. Oh, he does kick very well. Well, actually, his kicking game is awesome. So I said, I said he kicks very well. Yeah, he's great at it. Well, even though Al Qaeda can play, it, but still, it's not really comfortable. Yeah, for a right-handed player, for sure. Well, he's got to shoot with a. If he's going to try to make it, he's got to shoot with a bridge. It's a very thin cut, so it's a very uncomfortable shot. What's your choice here? To play with the bridge. I mean, uh, would you try to uh, find some kind of safety here? No, I think I would attack it. If I would, of course, reach it. <laughs> yeah, that's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> that's my kind of approach. <laughs> Attacking and aggressive. And th that is the reason uh, she is, well, pretty strong here now. Okay, so now I'm not going to play her in straight pool. And now I'm not going to play her in nine ball either. <laughs> We're running out of games that we can play. Well, well, I, don't I don't think I'm a very aggressive player because if I know there is 100% uh, safe, I would rather play safe than 50% bank shot. Well it's, it's percentages. <laughs> <laughs> it's percentages. Yeah. You have to play the percentage. If your odds of executing the safe are better than odds of making the ball, you play safe. 
Well, here in Russia, Paul, you have a very strong backup game in your background. A strong backup game? Yeah. There is a uh, one kind of pool you can always rely on. There is? Yes. It's full uh, full uh, rec banks. Maybe. I just wanted to say that I think you will not enough cut it. Well, maybe this is the way he went for. It was, just a, two it was a two way shot. Yeah, try trying to uh, come up with a safety like a living leave distance again. But I would have tried it a little differently because on that shot, you want to if you want to miss it, you want to miss it by overcutting it. Yeah, because that leaves I it against the rail, so. and then if you happen to cut it in, he's got shape on the seven ball. So I think he made a little bit of a mental mistake there. And he went for it. So it's a tough but makeable ball for David. Yeah, again, nothing easy left here. Still some work to be done. And that was probably the first miss of the match by uh, Chinakov. Uh, first uh, unforced error. Maybe. I can't remember missing any balls. He's been super solid this match. He missed a three ball when he couldn't reach it. Oh, you mean uh, shooting yeah. over the over the ball? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't call this unforced error. <laughs> I would because he but put he, he put the cue ball there. Yeah. Or he could uh, take a rest, a uh, bridge. I mean, mm -hmm. but he never use it. Never. Uh. Well, at his height, he shouldn't need to use the rest very often. Yeah, I'm sure, but sometimes. It's uh, the best way. Yeah. He probably wanted to play very beautiful way <laughs> and didn't want to use a bridge. Well, David's going to escape this racket, looks like. Unless he's too straight here. Oh, he's okay. He just bounced off the rail just a little bit. So it's just basically a stop shot. Seven to So Ruslan is still on the hill, nothing to happen to him there, but David Alkali is looking to reach his opponent, trying to gain advantage.
It's just confirmed uh, the win of uh, Maxim Dudenet over Mika Imanen and uh, the next, our next uh, televised match is going to be uh, Maxim versus uh, whoever wins uh, in the match uh, of uh, Denis Grab uh, versus Ralph Suke. You can make the one, but it's hard to get it through those openings without running into a ball. I think... Um Hmm. I think it's going to be two rails. The first short and then long rail. Well, he's he's being very cautious because whatever he does, he's betting the entire match on the outcome. And probably this is not the first time he's doing so. No, he's a he's a great player, and I'm sure he's been in this situation before. Oh, that's that a nice cut, and uh, that's unfortunate. He is not going uh, to be rewarded. Well, it's kind of like the breakout he went for a few racks ago and didn't quite get it. He's lucky not to give a cue ball in hand, though, to his opponent. Wow, look where the cue ball ended up. We shouldn't have any problem hitting the two balls. It's a question of can he get a a good safety out of it. Mm, he's even looking at the side rail route. I, l I like the end rail better. I think it gives you a better possibility of a safety. But the side rail, if, if you're trying to get the two ball out of that end of the table, it's from that angle it could scratch in the corner pocket. There's almost no chance he's going to scratch if he shoots it off the end rail. And he has a very good possibility of getting a safety. Once again, trying to work percentages here, and probably he sees uh, the side rail. Oh, he sees everything we see, and probably a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just, it's funny, players, even great players under pressure, sometimes make bad decisions. I was watching an IPT match between Alan Hopkins and somebody, and it was an eight ball. And it's Hill Hill, race to eight. And Alan makes a great safety, and gets ball in hand. And there's three balls left on the table, and the eight ball. And he set the cue ball down on the table, and as soon as he set it down, I said, he just lost. And he didn't get out from there because he didn't pick the right pattern. And I could tell when he put the cue ball down. And sure enough, he lost the match. And I went to him later and I asked him, I said, why did you do this? And I, I set the balls back up. I said, why did you put it here and go doop, doop, doop? And he's like, I didn't see it. <laughs> he said, I said, think uh, right. the, this kind of thing uh, happens to uh, everyone here sure. or there. Well, you... you that's one of the reasons why a lot of players are coached to walk around the table to see it from a number of perspectives. Because if he'd walked around, he probably would have done it that way, but he was standing in one spot and he looked at it and he said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And uh, he kind of laughed. He said, he said, we should have called a timeout and coached me. <laughs> we can't exactly do that when you're playing in a tournament. Yes, here we have Christine at Cash. <laughs> for those who are still guessing who this girl is here. Multiple European champion. Ah, come on, don't be shy. 
<laughs> it, 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 it's my daughter. It, it is well deserved. With all your hard work, that's very nice. And uh, of course, you are not going to stop here because you still have to beat uh, all these uh, Chinese uh, superstars. Yeah. Sure, it's a because all of a sudden. Uh, when uh, even uh, such big guns like uh, Yasmin Namshan uh, comes uh, there, she doesn't win either. Yeah, she can. She can hardly win there because well, they Jasmine Ocean, Kelly Fisher, Karen Core. Yeah, they go all over there, and none of them win. Oh, he made a bad hit. That should cost him the match. Rosen played a great safety. Yeah, but so. he could make it easier from the long rail, but. He wanted to play and uh, and kick it and save it and in the end he didn't make uh, anything of it. Very nice position on the four. So to remind you, this is the uh, last 16 stage, meaning the winner advances to last eight. I don't see anything that's going to stop him from running this rack now. Leaves himself an angle to roll the cue ball naturally. Perfect. And he pockets the winning table, uh, the match is over. And we sincerely thank uh, Christine Etkash for being here with us. Uh, she had to get up early today because of the matches and uh, he, uh, she, she felt a little bit dizzy here. <laughs> but she's okay, thanks once again. Wishing you luck. Also thank Paul Smith of Diamond Billiard Products and uh, we are going to have I think uh, Ruslan uh, Chinakov for the interview probably. Just let me check. К нам сейчас присоединился вот победительный э, встречи это Руслан Чинахов. Руслан, не могу тебя не поздравить. Жму твою руку. Может быть, немного кладки передастся. Скажи, пожалуйста, как, по, расскажи про свои ощущения. Э, по встрече было, было очень боевое начало. Э, много, много отыгрышей было. Вот расскажи, пожалуйста, об этом. Вот начало, середина и конец. Ну, всем здрасте. Сначала хотелось бы сказать спасибо всем, кто за меня болел. Кто не болел, все равно спасибо. Без вас. Тяжело расти. Да, игра складывалась, ну, начало чаще всего таким получается. Редко, когда бывает, что кто-то в равной игре уходит сильно вперед. Но там интересный момент получился, когда он повел. Я проиграл свой разбой. А следующим разбоем у него не упал шар. По моему при счете 3-2 не в мою пользу было. 3-3, тайм-аут, я собрал ски, я опять вышел вперед. Опять же у него биток с разбоя, я не смог реализовать. Ну, а дальше получилось так, что... Не вставало откровенно дармовых позиций после разбоя. А когда надо подбивать или что-то подобное делать, придумывать, игры всегда непонятно, повезет тебе в этот момент, нет. Мне с подбоем повезло. Ему дважды, когда он пытался открыть позицию, не повезло. 
Да, вот мы проводили как раз аналогию, вот та партия, при которой ты сделал идеально, я считаю, подбой на тройку, да, там, через девятку, ну, неважно, оно случилось так, как случилось, вот, в следующей же партии Дэвид пытался подбить также шестерку, у него это не вышло, да, то есть, соответственно, сразу то преимущество, которое у тебя было, ты его, ты его только усилил, и вот эти последние два отыгрыша, которые ты сделал, не сыграл Дэвид, и ты просто со собрал до конца, не допустив практически ни единой ошибки. Вот. Не, можем, не можем мы тебя вновь не поздравить, мы очень активно болеем за тебя, поверь, все мы в, те все мы в тебя верим. И желаем, желаем, тебе, желаем тебе удачи. И вот такой маленький вопрос. Что ты вот чувствуешь в тот момент, когда вот ты сейчас собирал, вот собирал последнюю вот эту вот позицию 7-5, и ты понимаешь, что вот 5-4-5 шаров отделяют тебя от выхода встречи. И причем мы знаем, что Дэвид Алькайда является чемпионом Европы по этой игре. Он призер чемпионатов мира именно по десятке, показывающий сейчас очень стабильную игру. Вот расскажи про свои ощущения. Думал ли ты о нем или просто, вот, как все говорится, думай о шарах, забивай, и все будет хорошо? Ну, на самом деле, с Давидом мы достаточно часто пересекаемся на европейской арене, на тех или иных соревнованиях, много приглашенных турниров, где мы часто бываем, он тоже много путешествует. Поэтому такого, что боязни игры... Никакой, никакой не происходит. Ну, как естественная боязнь есть внутри. Э -э, снаружи только перед игрой разговаривал э -э, с ребятами и говорят, что я внешне выгляжу достаточно спокойно и, не знаю, уверенно. На самом деле это все полное вранье. Да, при этом это ты мне, кстати, сказал это как раз. Внутри все бурлит, кипит, соответственно, когда стадии подходят к финальным, это все ужесточается. Естественно, когда последние шары, то Внутри, не знаю, сердце, наверное, бьется со скоростью 250 ударов в минуту. Но это достаточно естественное состояние. И, наверное, выигрывают турниры лишь те, кто могут с этим справиться. Поскольку расслабленное состояние на таких стадиях чаще всего сулит проигрыш, нежели победу. Спасибо всем еще раз за поддержку. Да, благодарим мы Руслана за, за интервью. И маленький момент. Про пройди, пожалуйста, вот в следующую комментаторскую... Okay, uh, Ruslan Chinakov is here uh, at our commentary booth. Uh, congratulations, uh, Ruslan, on your solid performance. And um, please share um, some thoughts on uh, your recent matches on, on, on your form overall, because uh, you are playing here as a defending champion. Uh, yeah, it's uh, all good organizers told me about it that I'm defended champion it it just makes me more pressure like so every year not a very good uh, thing to remind uh, yeah like four years ago it starts they said first time we are hope on you and I I won first time second and uh, every year just more and more pressure on me of course everybody laughing with that uh, but still it makes me more pressure the game was okay feel quite comfortable uh, in the beginning I was uh, lucky with the break sometimes I did a good safety straight after the break sometimes it was quite easy run um, yeah I did lead because of that and uh, probably when you're leading in the match that's uh, only two ways to finish it just wait for the for the mistake of opponent and running out because you didn't you didn't give up your own break and probably that's what I did Ah, last year you won the event uh, playing on uh, dynamic tables. Uh, this year it's on diamond. Uh, do you think uh, it uh, adds uh, anything uh, to your chances or maybe takes away from it? Uh, just before this tournament I spent like one month in America straight after I played the Kuwait Open and all these tournaments uh, we played on diamond tables. Because normally I would say that on the diamond tables right now it's not even more even normal for me than to play dynamic. And uh, of course, I would say that diamond tables for me uh, better. That means when I play on a better equipment for your own reason, uh, it's much easier to feel comfortable. Uh, probably our last question is, uh, are we ever going to see you on the squad of the Team Europe uh, for Moscone Cup? Yeah, <laughs> of course I would say yes, but it all depends on my level, my growing, because Sometimes, sometimes when I show a good game, I feel that I can be in the top. But sometimes my plan B is, uh, I would say, no good. Ah, do, you have any plans, uh, do, you ha do you have any plans like maybe uh, traveling more to uh, world ranking events? 
uh, I played all tournaments this year. Uh, no, I just would say that I have to spend more time uh, in a pool room with the top players, more time on the table with the playing with the top table uh, top players, because sometimes when you when you practice alone, it doesn't give you that much pressure as you need to grow. Uh, that's what I want to say. Next year I'll, I'll try to spend more time in America, try to find more gamble games, more practice time. We'll see what's gonna happen every year. I hope for the next, but one day it's gonna happen. Uh, I believe in that. Okay, so uh, well I have only one thing to say. American uh, pool players, beware, Ruslan is coming. So far so long, uh, thank you and uh, once again uh, good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thanks a lot. Thanks you all guys who watching me. Thanks. Thank you. Stay tuned with us. Uh, thanks again uh, Ruslan.